Hello, making a small video for the Facebook for e-mount uh, users that we are running. And uh, there was some discussion today about uh, sensor cleaning. And I figured um, step one would be how you quickly can change your lenses on a mirrorless camera. Because uh, there is a trick to it, or you can sort of learn a trick to it, to limit the amount of time that actually the sensor is open in the air. My personal view is uh, if you have a, a mirrorless camera and you take it with you because it's small, then one of the biggest advantages is that the lenses are also small so you can take a few with you. And uh, if that is the case, you of course have to switch them out and well, that's part of the fun and you will get dust at some point on your sensor. But uh, one way to combat it is to have the sensor almost never exposed at all, right? So what I want to show you is a, a trick how you can quickly do it. I will do it. Uh, um, I didn't prepare that much because I hate to put a lot of uh, preparation into making these small videos. So hopefully my hands will be in the correct area and you can actually physically see it. So I took uh, a camera, right? So here it is. It now has um, uh, the 16 to 70 attached to it. You can see that I put already a few lenses here, including a bigger one, but uh, some lenses that you uh, probably all own, or at least some of you uh, will own them. And this is a normal uh, camera. It now has the 16 to 70 on there. And let's, it's always a small bigger lens. Um, the others are, the primes are smaller. Uh, but let's see how you uh, can quickly change them. So important is, to um, of course have the camera off and what I would normally do and I might not do this in the video that much is aim it down so if you can do it when aiming a tiny bit down not like this of course it makes more sense that less dust can sort of fall in right so the major uh, advantage of small cameras is you can do it almost in one more uh, movement and that way limit the amount that the sensor is open so what I normally do you take the cap off I normally put it between my fingers like this right but i'm now in a little bit awkward position so i'm not doing that or you can keep it uh, between sometimes i have to admit i keep it uh, uh, between my lips but uh, whatever uh, works for you so now there's only one important part to this trick that is there's a dot on your camera of course where it's supposed to line up with a dot on your or on your lens so it's supposed to line up with your camera now you, what you need to do is keep your finger, your thumb, near that dot. And now see what happens. So with smaller lenses you can do it, let's say, back to back, right? So I have these two lenses and I will do now do it like this and not aim down. But normally you would aim it down, but then you can't see it on the camera. So the movement will not be as smooth as I normally do. But um, what you can do, you unlock it, right, like this. You twist it. And you lock it back on. You can now see I did it in slow motion. So if you do it <laughs> just to show you. But you can see how a little time the sensors actually open. So a little bit quicker. Like this. Lock it back on. Right? Like this. Oh. Like I said I'm a little bit in a weird position now. So let me do it in a sort of more normal position. Right? So like this. Right? So unlock it. Move it. Lock it in again. You can see how little time it took me to have the sensor open. And also, in the beginning, when I first uh, was working with the smaller cameras, um, you sort of are always looking where to place the lens, right? I mean, in this case, you don't have to, because you're actually having both of the lenses in, in your hand. I would definitely practice this uh, on top of something soft, like your bed or a couch. Uh, so if it drops, then yeah, no harm, no, no foul. Um, I also normally try to do it above my camera bag because even then if it drops not a big deal uh, One exception there so just for the fun. Let's Try another lens. So this one is a little bit more tricky it's the, the 10 to 18 because it's a little bit different shaped so you but it's still Relatively easy right have the dot somewhere in the near neighborhood of your thumb flip it around Put it back on right again. I'm in a little bit uncomfortable position, but you can see even now I don't have too much of a problem doing this. Okay, let's taste the 50, then we have switched, I think, all of them, and then we will do the big one. So switch it out, turn it, do it back on.
right? And again, normally a little bit more aim down. Now, the, the one exception, of course, is the bigger lenses. So let's take uh, the 70 to 200. Now, um, you can't really do it in one hand movement. You could do it with some of the bigger lenses in this angle. So you do it like this, which actually also works. Because, well, let me show you one time. So if you have like the uh, 55 to 200, which I didn't get, but let's say the, the somewhat bigger, but not as big as the, as, the, as the really big ones, you can also do it not like this, but like this, because then you can sort of go like this, right? And of course, if the tube is longer, so let's assume that this one is quite long, it's still quite easy to sort of have it in one hand motion, right? So like this, and still be able to put it on here, if that makes sense, right? So, but again, a little bit of practice, spend like 20 minutes and it becomes uh, almost uh, muscle memory uh, sort of action. Now, the bigger ones, of course, you can't really do that easily. What I do, and I think what makes sense, is you have it in your camera bag already. I always have it this way up. Right. So what I would normally do is open it up in the in the back. Right. Make sure where the dot is. Right. And then while above the back, just sort of lock it in like this. And again, also removing it. Right. If I remove it, by the way, what I normally do is first put it in the back. Right. Because it needs to go there anyway. Then unlock it and put the other lens on. Right. It's that simple. Well, let me lock this one up again. I think this is about uh, about all I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, it, it is is not like the the smartest trick in the world. But um, if you haven't seen it before, it's kind of kind can be kind of an, an eye opener compared to if you are fiddling around. You have to put a lens somewhere and then the cap and. Um, uh, Let's say you're taking pictures at a tra train station or whatever. Where do you put the lens? And, and in this case, it's quite easy. So if I am using two or three primes at night and I have uh, in my pocket uh, the other primes, you can imagine you can do this on the street. And again, it depends, of course, a little bit how big your hands are. And I don't have the smallest hands, but also not the biggest hands. Um, it should be quite easy to sort of... It's not like that this is unstable, right? There is no way that you're going to drop the cameras. Be a little bit careful, of course, with the, with the hoods, which I always leave on. Um, but it should not really be a big deal in that there's risk of dropping the lenses. Um, it gets a little bit more tricky, of course, if you're holding some of the bigger ones. But uh, the good news on mirrorless, most of the time you don't have the bigger ones anyway. Um, so yeah, this, this was it. Hopefully it was useful for the group. Um, if you found this on YouTube and you didn't join our Facebook, uh, Facebook group yet, um, please search for it. It's called um, uh, the Sony E-mount uh, group and we mostly post uh, pictures, um, sometimes a little bit of video, but mostly po uh, post pictures and uh, provide some information and answer questions and critique if you want. So uh, please join in if you have it already. I made this video for that group and I will be posting that uh, today. Okay, bye-bye.